834 right now. So the 67th annual Puerto Rican parade will take place this Sunday along Fifth Avenue, New York City, home to more than 1 million Puerto Ricans with a rich history of advocating for underserved communities. So during the 70s, the Young Lords Party fought for equity in health care and education. The group took over Lincoln Hospital, the South Bronx, in 1970. Their protests led to free public school lunches, bilingual education and improved sanitation services. Joining us this morning to discuss the contributions of the Young Lords Party and to share her own celebration of Puerto Rican culture is poet activist Mariposa Maria Teresa Hernandez. So good morning to you, Mariposa. Thank you for being with us. Good morning, good Hazel morning. and Dan. Thank you for having me. Of course. So last night you attended a Power for, Power for Puerto Rico event last night and you presented in honor to a woman that is a member of the Young Lords. Tell us a little bit about her and what the award was about. Yes, I was um, there last night at the Benefit for Power for Puerto Rico at the Brick in Brooklyn to honor Denise Oliver Velez, former Young Lord and member of the Black Panther Party, and uh, a writer who is actively engaged on Twitter and the Daily Coast. Yeah, and why was she honored last night? She was honored for her contributions um, as a um, uh, a young advocate at the time, uh, most of the young lords were between the ages of 18 and 21. She was mm -hmm. um, a young uh, person who was one of many that was um, a part of the takeover of Lincoln Hospital um, to demand um, uh, health care for our, our community and other other actions, including um, providing free public lunch and um, breakfast for New York City public school students. Wow, and you know, the, the Young Lords really created this cultural renaissance, and there was really a movement, the New Yorican movement, right? Can you talk to us a little bit about the power of that movement and how it kind of evolved? Yes, the, the New Yorican um, uh, literary movement and uh, arts movement, which was also a part of the black arts movement. They were both intertwined in that moment in the 1960s and 70s um, that included poetry, um, art, uh, music, mm -hmm. you know, um, boogaloo, you yeah. know, um, just so many different art forms, documentary film, and just so many contributions that 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 we that we have today. How they really you in? How they really you in? Me, uh, well, uh, you know, I was just a baby at the time, um, but I had the 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 the. The, the space that they created so that when I became a poet in the 90s, I was able to recite poetry at the New York Poets mm. Cafe and, um, and, and in other spaces that, that, they, that they created in the 70s. And this year's Puerto Rican Day Parade, they're celebrating creativity and diversity, and you are a poet. So you are being celebrated, yeah. and you're going to perform a poem for us today? Yes, I'm going to recite a poem titled... Ode to the Diasporican, and it's dedicated to Power for Puerto Rico. Um, that is an organization that works for um, creating and, um, and, and continuing the legacy of advocacy in our community, and where we advocate for um, where we advocate for issues that also impact other people, not just Puerto Ricans. And tell us a little bit about the process of you putting this poem together. Uh, the process. I wrote this poem actually a long time ago when I was in my early 20s and it became my signature poem because it resonated with a lot of Puerto Ricans and it's a poem about identity and about um, feeling cultural pride. Um, even though I was not born in Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico was born in me. Wow. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Yeah. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, Mighty Posa, you take it away, okay? We're okay. all yours. All right, thank you. Mira mi cara puertorriqueña, a mi pelo vivo, a mis manos morenas. Mira mi corazón que se llena de orgullo y dime que no soy boricua. Some people say that I'm not the real thing, boricua that is, because I wasn't born on the enchanted island, because I was born on the mainland north of Spanish Harlem, because I was born in the Bronx. Some people think that I'm not bona fide because my playground was a concrete jungle, because my Rio Grande de Loisa was the Bronx River, because my Fajaldo was City Island, my Luquillo Orchard Beach, and summer nights were filled with city noises instead of 
Cookies and Puerto Rico was just some paradise that we only saw in pictures. What does it mean to live in between? What does it take to realize that being Boricua is a state of mind, a state of heart, a state of soul? Mira mi cara puertorriqueña, a mi pelo vivo, a mis manos morenas. Mira mi corazón que se llena de orgullo y dime que no soy Boricua. No nací en Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico nació en mí. Yeah. Beautiful. That was amazing. You can hear the, the pride in your voice and just the way you, you, you deliver it as well. Thank you. How long something like that take you to write? Actually, I just wrote it. I wrote it in the spirit of the moment um, uh, after one of too many times having my um, my identity um, questioned, mm -hmm. you know, and um, our identity is something that is important to us that should not be, um, that we should not gatekeep yeah. um, on, on, on the pride that someone feels in their heart because my grandparents happened to be born in Puerto Rico mm -hmm. and they came here to New York, um, but they instilled that pride in me and wow. that's what we carry forward. Beautiful. And we can certainly feel that pride yes. and hear it in your voice. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing your poem with us this morning. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you so it. much. Have Thanks a great time this weekend, too, at the Thank parade. Thank you. And